Welcome to the Effects Loop. I'm Diaz. And I'm Chris. And we're keeping you in the loop of the guitar community. I don't know why it sounds every week I do it. It's just getting closer and closer to a Saturday special. Right. And only you can prevent guitars from... I don't know. What would you want to prevent guitar? You know what? We're going to cut this out, which means Chris isn't going to. Oh. Uh, <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Stringjoy. Who? Who? What? Who? Oh, I thought you said who. I'm like, dude. Woohoo. <laughs> Woohoo. All right, yeah, no, this episode is brought to you by Stringjoy. Um, check them out. They're doing some really cool stuff. They actually just posted a video of an interview with a guy who I'm about to figure out his name because <laughs> I, I, like, I'm going to see it and I'm going to be really mad. Um, because I was like, yeah, no, no, no. I, the name sounded really familiar. But they just put it on YouTube, and it is with uh, Ariel Posen. Um, he is a really cool guitar player. Uh, he plays a lot of like hybrid slide playing. So he plays slide, but he doesn't always he doesn't only play slide. And they talked about why his standard set is 17s to 64s. Which is and he doesn't always play slide on that. No, because he actually plays in B standard. Ah. Uh. So he brings it down, uh, or he he changes it by. F- he said four semitones, which is actually. So let's see. Yeah, I guess that's right. One, two, three. Uh. It's actually five. Um, five half steps. So one, two, three. I, four. I guess a half step is a semitone. I'm guessing. I don't know. Um, I know raised on the, the traditional uh, music theory where we speak in half steps. Yeah, <laughs> get with it. No, but um, it's actually uh, so if someone actually knows the answer to that, feel free to hop on the group and yell at us. Um, but yeah, no, it was a really cool interview. I enjoyed it thoroughly and it was really neat because he talks a lot about string tension um, and it gets into some of the actual uh, science behind it, which is pretty cool because he said, you know, when you're playing in B standard, but you've got 17s, it's the same tension as if you're playing like 10s in E standard. So it's, you know, one of the things, because you, you think you're playing on 17s, you're not bending strings. No, homeboy can bend the strings. Right. Hmm. So it's really cool. Check out Stringjoy. Go to stringjoy.com. You can order some of those 17 to 64 if you're feeling manly enough or womanly enough or if you're just feeling enough. I, I need know. to hurry up and get my Les Paul Jr. project done so I can get with Scott on uh, what I need for D standard. D standard? Yeah. Thir- 13s. Probably. I don't know. It'd have to be a 12.5 maybe. Which you can do with String Joy because they do yeah. halves. Yeah. Go String Joy. All and right. So G. <laughs> yes. Um, but go check them out and check out their YouTube. Check out their uh, Facebook. They've got a lot of cool stuff. Scott, the owner, operator, CEO, and head honcho, has a lot of cool stuff that he puts up. Um, and so that moves on to what's new. And Chris, you're talking about a Les Paul Jr. project. Uh, um, yeah, well, I've had the guitar sitting around for a while. It's a uh, Axel Bulldog, I believe is the model husk so i'm gonna get it repainted by a local guy uh i gotta save up some money for that that. the same guy who did the bass yes okay he did really good work yeah well he did the clear coat on the bass i did the glitter uh but he's a professional he does he does this for a living so i'm pretty sure he could do a nice white coat i was gonna do it myself but it's like eh, (laughs) i don't want to fuck this up (laughs) <laughs> so yeah got that in the works hopefully and then i'm selling a lot of my gear uh partially because i'm moving out in june uh and moving into a smaller space um what else is there with that so i'm thinking of getting either a helix or kemper so camper do it i'd be so excited oh my gosh so we're starting hashtag uh camper versus helix uh journey uh and hopefully by end of summer i'll have a decision and have it in my hands that that's gonna be awesome yeah 
I hope so. But I think that's it with me. What do you got? Um, I've actually got some. You know, I've gotten like a little bit crazy with some some of the cheap stuff, mm-hmm. and I'm really kind of like going nuts. But uh, I got a Behringer VD400 Vintage Delay. I picked that up at a pawn shop. It was the same price. It was pretty. I mean, I think it was brand new. Um, if not, I mean, it was still in plastic and everything. It was the same price as Amazon Prime. It was like twenty three, twenty four bucks. Hmm. Um, and I was just kind of walking around, and I I got it. And it's, it's pretty cool. Um, I also got a Ross Distortion, the black one. Um, it's definitely cool. It looks great. I haven't plugged it in yet because I lost my little power supply that I need for it. Um, I was actually going to plug it in and play it on today's episode because I've got some new things that I was going to plug and play, but that's not going to be one of them, sadly. So let's see, which brings on to the fact that I'm actually going to play a little bit of guitar because I've got the MJT Strat, which I haven't played on the air yet. So we're going to hear that, and we're going to be hearing the Vintage Delay VD400, and one of our Patreon supporters, Willa Hugh, wanted to hear what the Spring King sounded like from Dan Electro. So I'm going to kind of give you my like standard tone. I'm going to take this reverb off real quick, and this is going to be my standard clean. This is on the bridge with the grinder. Uh, the pickups in this are the grinder and two triple shots from Lambert Tones, hmm. um, which has a single, has a coil split to give me that single coil sound in the first position. So that's the, that's first position coil split. So So it's got a really cool sound. It's it, this thing just sounds fantastic. But I'm going to add some effects to it and have a little bit of fun. I'm going to start with the Spring King. Um, this is... I've got it set in a weird spot, which I don't know why. This is all the knobs set at noon. And it has. this is a fantastic spring reverb, so... I'll let you hear kind of that little tail, uh, the trail that's coming off of it right now. It has that real bouncy... Um, with a tone in the middle, it's, it's kind of a higher pitched sound, but um, and this is in the fifth position, and I'm going to move it to the fourth. So it's got a really nice sound. Um, most of the John Mayer profiles I pick up already have a spring reverb on them. So I know that's kind of the reverb sound he likes. But if you got a spring reverb, let's turn all the knobs to the max and see what we can do with this thing. And if you hear that little slight rumble, that's actually me touching the pedal because it does have an actual spring inside and it's actually got a kick pad so you can do stuff like this. Interesting. Which is a lot of fun, but this is kind of this. So that's a really cool. I'm going to turn the tone all the way down and see what we can get it sounding like cuz I kind of like the darker. Mm-hmm. 
and I'm gonna do this one last riff for the Spring King because I'm gonna copy 60 Cycle Hum because it works for them, so. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> take that, Ryan. But no, it's actually it's got a really nice I like So, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to move to a different reverb for the delay. Um this is the reverb I'm going to be using. It's called the natural reverb. It's on the Kemper, so there's a slight volume drop in the Spring King, which kind of makes me sad. But if you use it kind of like always on, you can kind of adjust for it in the end of it. But we're going to go to the vintage delay. This is with all knobs set at noon. So it's a vintage echo. It's not really like, there's a vintage delay. It's kind of got that echo feel to it. I don't know what it would be compared to. So it's kind of, I don't know, it gets kind of crazy really fast. This is with the intensity about two o'clock. It goes straight into like self oscillation. At two? At like two o'clock. Jeez. So I want to, I want to turn it to the max, but I don't want to kill all the listeners. Mm. So I'm going to turn it to the max. And I turned it down really fast, <laughs> but... I mean, this is a $24 delay. I'm not upset with it. Right. I think this is a really good, uh, like, especially if you're doing a board for cheap. Um, this is really cool. Turn down the echo. Kind of get the repeats. It has a really cool background delay that, like, lead line where you don't need it in front of you but you need it just old enough to fill you out a little bit right so it's got a really good sound to it yeah i'm trying to think i feel like i didn't really hit on the guitar that much um this is third position this is middle so you can get a feel for that i'm gonna turn the delay off and so this is One thing I did with this strat that was kind of different, Scott Hamilton got really mad at me because I'm actually doing a floating trim on it, which is some people because they're kind of sacrilegious for a strat, but this thing has fantastic tuning stability because I put the Fender LSR roller nut on it mm -hmm. and all the other, I've got basic six screw, uh, the saddles uh, are the, like the old school vintage style. And this thing stays in tune great. So, like, this is, I'll just kind of wail on it. And <laughs> Still in tune. So, hmm. that's why roller nuts are the king, in my opinion. Right. It's got that really, it's got that John Mayer sound, mm -hmm. I, and I love that. So it's, he's got a fantastic sound, in my opinion. I'm trying to think, what's some other Strat players that I, let's see, we can do some Tom DeLong, because that's where all the tone is. Right. Actually, that does sound kind of Tom DeLong. <laughs> it does. <laughs> well, that's, that's a humbucker in the bridge of a Strat. It actually works out, so... 
Um, but yeah, this is a fantastic guitar. If you ever like think about building a guitar, dude, I trust MJT all day, every day now. Um, if you see the side by picture, side by side pictures on our Instagram of the reference picture I sent them and what I s- got back, it's spot on. So, thanks MJT <laughs> for doing a great job. All right, so that was enough of Diaz just noodling. Let's move on to some gear news. I feel like we we should get like a song or like a thing for gear news. I mean, we could. All right, we found so our maybe t- not this week. <laughs> yeah, not not this week. Maybe after Summer Nam. Maybe. I, you know what? I'll just send you an audio of me going. <laughs> like uh works what's it michael winslow the guy who did uh police academy and all that it's winslow i think it's michael winslow we're gonna go with that yeah um but yeah uh let's see so first thing is something that (laughs) chris kind of pointed out the guy who's like tommy wiseau from uh (laughs) the room just the way he talks Mm -hmm. it's kind of that uh that accent where you're just kind of like I don't know where you're from. But And then like very dry but yet trying to seem like he's very into what he's talking about. And this is the pedal. <laughs> ha Hi Mark. <laughs> That'd be awesome if he started the video. Oh hi Mark. Um, I just oh hey guys. Uh, oh, oh hi guys. I did not hit mm. her. I did not <laughs> Mm. Oh my gosh. All right. Anywho. So this is actually, I thought this was pretty cool. It is. So this is an onboard expression system. Um, this says, you know, they really introduced that name. I'm kind of hoping they're at summer name. Uh, this guy's playing a relic strat. Bleh. So I did that for Will LeHue. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's really cool. Cause what it does is it's, it incorporates into your, uh, volume and tone pots i believe mm-hmm. you're so you're getting like new pots you're gonna put them in uh, it's connected via via stereo trs cable and it plugs into the receiver which you could put on your pedal board and put it wherever you want to put it and it actually can control midi functions it can have an expression pedal so one of your knobs becomes an expression pedal and it has a switch out so you can actually simulate a foot switch so this is really neat for people like me with Kemper. Um, they're demoing it with an axe. Of, are th- is that an axe? Uh, I wasn't paying That's attention the, it's, to it's the a, video It's the floor fully. one. It's the new floor one. Oh, yeah. It is. Um, but uh, there's... It's really cool because it just is progressing <laughs> guitar, in my opinion. It's progressing the things we can do with a guitar. Which not a lot of people might be for that because there's the guys who are like, oh, I just plug straight into an amp. And then there's the people like me who are like, I like fun toys. Mm-hmm. And this, this is. This isn't really a toy, though. This is a utility. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of potential. Like, I'm even tempted to put this in something, especially if I end up with a helix or something yeah so this is something and it's actually quite small um so it's not taking up a lot of real estate the thing i'd be a little bit nervous about is um i don't know about wiring stuff into the guitar so it looks like it's got special jacks and special so it's a trs jack you got special pots. Isn't too different. My concern would be with like the pot, and if you have a sh- more shallow body, mm-hmm. that would be my only concern. They keep showing it in a strat. It's the same strat. So, um, let's see. They actually were at Summer Nam last year, and we missed them. Hmm. Well, hopefully they'll be there this year because I definitely want to give this a shot. So I definitely see this being good for, I could definitely see this for like, ooh, worship, like a worship leader, like to where you don't have to have mm-hmm. your pedal board and stuff up on stage, especially if you're running a Helix or Kemper. Because mm-hmm. if you can use both like the tap function and the MIDI function, because it says it can change snapshots and scenes and presets. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and it looks and what I the only part I caught from the video because I only could get like a minute and a half into it until I realized it was a 10 minute video was that there's an indicator on the actual box that shows you what position it's in okay so it's only available it will only work any it's it'll fit any Fender style electric guitar it won't fit in Les Paul style guitars because the threads are not it needs a larger thread Let's see. MIDI output. It works PC and CC controls with the Axe FX2 and the X8, the Line 6 Helix Floor, LT, and XX, and uh, the Helix Stomp. The Kemper, but it says PC only. Which is kind of weird because you really don't do a whole lot with a P. With, oh, it only sends PC. It doesn't send CC. Never mind. I was like. I was like, the Kemper doesn't even have like a good PC interface. Like, so explain to us what uh, PC and CC means. So PC is program changes. CC is command changes. Program mm-hmm. changes are like if I wanted to change an entire scene, like if I wanted to go from one scene to another, or one. Um, I'm, yeah, I think scene's the best word. Okay. Or uh, performance would be the same thing um, on a Kemper. That's where it sends an entire program change. A command change is if you're telling it to do something like change the volume on something, or usually your CCs are stuff like that. Change the volume, or turn on this foot switch, or you're changing things um, in the sense of like, it's small detailed changes. Program right. changes are changing like pre, like in t- giant changes, you're changing the entire performance. Gotcha. So that's kind of the sense of it, in my opinion. I'm <laughs> sure there's someone out there who can be a lot more detailed on it than I am. I'm still kind of MIDI noob. So right. it says Strymon Mobius, which is goofy because I would, I'm assuming it would do any Strymon. Um, you would think. But this is MIDI. Uh, so Alexander Pedal's Neo series. I don't, th- I mean, they're not going to list everything it would work with, which is kind of weird. They have a switch output you can change. It works as a foot switch, which is like the Kemper, Line 6, Fractal stuff. And it says Marshall Silver Jubilee 2554. I don't know why that amp is so special on that. Expression output, Boss RV6, uh, Mission Engineering Expressionator, Strymon Mobius, Kemper. I don't think, I don't know why they'd put this entire list, but okay. (laughs) Of like, yes, that's just what they had on hand exactly between all the, the employees. Probably the things, yeah, it might have been the <laughs> things that they actually tested and the only things that they could actually say, yes, this is what works with it. Right. So um, I'd like to really see this at Summer Nam again. Uh, by again, I mean actually see it this time. Mm-hmm. So, all right. I mean, it looks cool. You guys should check it out. Once again, that is the Noatronic, N-O-A-T-R-O-N-I-C, Onboard Expression. Um, next we're going to be talking about ZT's new lunchbox reverb combo. Uh, lunchbox is hard. Lunchbox guitar amps have kind of had a little bit of a revival in the past few years. A lot of people are trying to do s- smaller stuff. Um, there's people like Wilco who have been touring with them. Uh, we talked about like the cure touring with like line six amps, stuff like that. We talked about that. I think it was last week with Clifton and, there's a lot of different things people are doing on the road and using small little lunchbox amps is one of them. I guess you get the sound out of it, but this is just a really cool thing. Um, they're also launching an, a lunchbox cab, which is a passive cabinet match to match the amp. Hmm. Um, I think size wise, this thing is 7.7 inches high, 9.8 inches wide and 5.3 inches deep, which is pretty dang tiny but it has a lot of cool stuff so it, it, the controls are gaze gain treble gaze yeah gain bass treble volume and reverb control it does have a headphone and a di output output with a speaker emulation and it also has an internal speaker mute whenever you plug that in and you have an extension speaker output uh it's a 100 watt rms class d power amplifier which is so i'm guessing solid state yep uh, custom designed high power 6.5 inch speaker that's a small speaker which is going to get a very specific sound which a lot, some people are going for it so the lunchbox reverb only weighs 9.5 pounds hmm. and the speaker cabinet only weighs 7 pounds I own guitars that weigh more than these things 
Yeah. And, and if the, geez, if it's a hundred watt output, like this is a pretty good uh, practice amp and be able to use it out. The, yeah. I mean, this is like, um, like a busking amp, something small, something cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's only, it's $399, which is pretty decent for, um, a smaller amp like that. It's not horrible. It looks really cool too. So I got to give them that. I didn't look at any more pictures than the stock one, but, um, and then the cab, that small cabinet's only $149. It's actually cheap for a speaker cabinet. Yeah. Well, it's tiny. I wonder how big the, I wonder how many, what size speaker is in the, uh, the speaker cabinet. Uh, I'm guessing it's going to be a cab two. Huh? The cab two. Correct. Yeah. I'm guessing it's 6.5 inch in both. Uh, yep. 6.5 inch. This episode's brought to you by 6.5 inch. All right. Um, let's move on to the next thing. Cause we actually got a few cool new stuff. Um, Supro, uh, is reissuing the triple tone guitar. It's now called the tritone. It looks pretty neat. It's kind of got that Jack white feel mm. to it. Maybe. It's just That's not I, who I would have picked. Who would you have picked? You pick someone. Uh, then. You know, why don't you pick someone, Jimmy Chris? Page, this That's I'm done. I can't do this anymore. A, uh, okay, bye. So, uh, <laughs> and then there was Chris. That's you. Were the, <laughs> you were the last one. We were always wondering who it was going to be. It's me or uh, you. <laughs> has won by default. <laughs> You're like, I but, uh, own the name now. <laughs> and technically, my parent media company owns it, so... <laughs> technically, I came up with it, you jerk. <laughs> All right, so let's, 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 uh, uh, let's, let's save the podcast and let's get back on focus. The only thing I don't like about it... For the Patreons. It, yeah, for the, for the Patreons. <laughs> bah, 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 uh, is... I, I don't like the way the neck in this picture looks wide. Like from the top of the fretboard to the bottom of the fretboard. It looks mm. like it looks like one of those old uh, Stella uh, acoustics you see on Facebook Marketplace for 15 uh, bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of has that. I don't know. Maybe it's the. What? Let's see if I can find it. And also, I don't. I'm guessing this is just a bad picture or just. Maybe bad Photoshop. Uh oh, it might be just be bad Photoshop. Uh, mm-hmm. like the bind. Oh, the binding is blending in with the white background. Never mind. The way they have it looking on their website mm-hmm. is it looks like the the in between the frets on the sides of the neck got mm-hmm. uh is like sanded in. Oh, yeah. But now I'm seeing there is a binding on it down at the bottom, and it's just blending in. It reminds me of a penguin in a tuxedo wearing well, gold I, chains. I mean, isn't it? Uh, That's why they call them penguins. I don't. I don't know how to feel about this. I twenty four like because I've also been wanting a uh, Les Paul mm-hmm. Black Beauty. I want a Les Paul Black Beauty too, but this does not like satisfy that at all. Does this have a P90 in the bridge? It's a, it's a Super Alnico bridge pickup, is what it says. That doesn't tell me anything, Supro. I don't know. Maybe it's their own things and they're ashamed of it. It must be. I don't know. I, I, I liked it at first, but now the more I look at it, the less I like it. Why are the... What? Why? Okay, so <laughs> in the bridge pickup... Uh-huh. The screws, the pole screws, are in the middle of the pickup. That's why I was wondering if it was a P90, but I think these are all single coils. <sighs> Supro, get your crap together. <laughs> I don't even know. Are they going to come in different colors, or is it just black set net with black satin finish? Um, oh, it's that Pal Ferro fretboard. I don't like the is- look of it. Why? <sighs> you just really don't like this, do you? Every time, every, like, the longer I look at it, the more I get mad at it. <laughs> is the, 
Oh, they at least it's got block inlays. I'll give them that. I'm guessing the bridge, the original had a floating bridge, not a floating. What is it? That, I guess that's technically a floating bridge. Uh, the, the one you find on Gretsch. Yeah. It's the one that moves. That's considered a floating. Or is it? Or am I confusing things? I think I think it is. Technically. No. A f- Maybe it, I think it is. Maybe somebody will correct us if it's wrong. Well, I don't but care because this new one has a tone to tunomatic tunomatic bridge. Yeah. Yeah. So which I that's an upgrade. Yeah. Mm. You don't have to break out the double stick tape like you do with the Gritch. All right. So for nine hundred and ninety nine dollars, I'd say I'll see you on the deal of the day for three hundred in about seven months. All if right. That's the case. We'll be getting one. Yeah. So I, that's stupid deal of the day guitar. All right, so n- next, I'm going to skip that and come back to it, which I accidentally opened it anyways. All right, so two things kind of happened this week. Um, I'm going to talk about this one because it's actually, it'll tie in. So just stay with me on this journey. Matt Bellamy, Matt Bellamy gave Tom Morello a custom Manson electric guitar. And by, I'm not talking about Marilyn Manson. I'm not talking about Charlie Manson. I'm talking about the company called Manson. And my dogs are barking like crazy. It's fine. But they're going to distract me. All right. But anywho, <laughs> um, he got him this really cool guitar. that says Power to the People on it, which stays with the Tom Morello thing. Um, and what the freaking crap? They're getting louder. They're coming for you. Oh, my gosh. Um, but this is a really cool guitar. I want to know what little custom things he has on there uh, because, um, oh, sorry. It's got, uh, it's a Bellamy signature model, which has a sustainer neck pickup, uh, Floyd Rose tremolo. Hmm. And then it has uh, that, the Tom Morello one has a kill switch because it's Tom Morello. He's got to have a kill switch. And that's really cool. That goes into his arm, the homeless guitar, soul power, those kind of things. Um, it's really neat. And you can hear a lot of Tom Morello influence on Matt Bellamy's playing using the whammy pedal, doing all these cool little things. So this is really neat, which brings me to my next thing. Matt Bellamy actually is now, I guess the controlling owner of Manson guitars. Uh, he was really kind of the main guy that played Manson guitars, uh, or Manson, Manson guitar works. I'm sure there's a lot of other people, but when you think of famous guitar players, you think of, Matt Bellamy, he plays the telly style is mm-hmm. what it looks like. And say what you want about Matt Bellamy and the Muse, but they do some cool stuff. I'm and okay with the Muse. I like the Muse. Jason Wilding apparently doesn't from uh, Wampler. I saw him post something about it, but you can find that on it's your... It's okay. He can be wrong. Yep. Um, so Hugh Manson, who's the luthier and namesake of Manson Guitars, will still remain a consultant to the company. Um, I'm, but with Matt Bellamy, I'm guessing he's going to make it more accessible to the masses. And I really want one. If I got like a, a freaked out telly, I'd want a Manson. I'd want yeah. a Matt Bellamy signature. And I want to get one with a chaos pad built into it. Mm-hmm. So I can do madness. Which I th- that's actually on the base, but I could still do it too. Um, and the last thing on the gear news is uh, Squatch Design Co., who is you know part of the Sinusoid family, which I think is just owned by Sinusoid, just released the premium leather straps, and these things look nice. Oh, I missed that link. There it is. You're right there in the middle. I jumped over it. Um, it's got a uh, two inch wide design, three layers of super soft leather. So it's added comfort. It's not just one thick layer and it's got the really cool pull through adjustable design. Um, that's the one that you pull it through and you can adjust the height that way. And it also has different notches for you to attach on the guitar. Like you don't just have one spot that hooks on the tail into your guitar. You can move it up to like another notch, another Wow, I just I forgot the another word. hole. No notch, another notch in the belt, kind of style. So that's it's really cool. There's a lot uh, you can do with this. And Albert uh, from Squatch Design Co. 
assured me it's good for tall people. It's good for short people. It's good for all of your people. That's actually on sale until Friday. If you're listening, so the people who actually listen early, you can order it. It's on sale until Friday, June 14th, 2019. Um, Squatch Design and Co. has been doing pretty cool stuff. We talked about the Pelotar last week. I don't know if you saw that, Chris. They did the wood top Pelotar. Oh, yeah, I saw that. And I've actually got a little bit of insider information because I was actually texting Albert while we were recording at the beginning. <coughs> and he said, um, apparently they keep picking petals that I like. Since he knows I'll love the one for yeah. this month. I said, He's oh, gosh, trying gosh. to get you to spend money. He is. Um, but I can't say what it is. Um, I told him I wouldn't say anything, but I told him I'm recording an episode. But he did say that I can say that they're doing another pedal. They've got one lined up for June and July. So it looks like for the, you know, they had May's. Pelotar, June's going to be a different pedal, hmm. um, and July is going to be another different pedal. It's going to be wood topped. It's going to be looking great. So keep your eyes out for that. If you're not in the Sinusoid Secret Customer Group, buy something from them and then join that group. You have to buy something. You have to be a customer. That's kind of the thing. And you get to hear about some of this cool stuff. And let's see. Well, uh, maybe what we'll do is if you're also a Patreon person if you don't want to join that group you can just give me money and i'll tell you about it i'll send you a message i'm like hey look this is really cool because i know some people who know some things i already know what the next pedal is going to be but you guys don't so check it out keep your eyes open i promise you this next pedal is going to be amazing i'll probably have to buy one so hopefully i get a bonus tube screamer yeah, because that's my all-time favorite, Chris. <laughs> yeah, caught me. All right, um, let's move on to topics. Uh, there was, So there was kind of like two topics. Um, I posted in the group what for – I needed an album to listen to um, because I was working on the episode script. And I got these – oh, yeah, new stuff. I actually got new over-the-ear monitors for when we record. I got some Tascam TH – X 300 something like that I don't know got a stupid deal of the day and they actually sound pretty good so I wanted to listen to an album to kind of see how much more I liked them and I listened to Nebraska by Bruce Springsteen which is really cool because that was suggested by Tim Worley I believe right I'm gonna feel really bad if I'm wrong yeah Tim Worley yeah um and it was really cool. The backstory of the album is, so Springsteen released this huge album, had radio hits. It was this pop rock thing. Like everyone's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And they expected the same thing to come out of his next album, but he actually went and recorded a 15 track acoustic album pretty much in one sitting. Nice. So this is just, it was really cool. It was really nice. Um, apparently he had been recording his demos into a boom box, but he decided to inv- vest in a Tascam 144 four track cassette recorder so he can add an extra guitar percussion to give the E Street Band a better idea of what he wanted so he set all this up and sat in the night and pretty much uh, recorded this thing and um, it's just uh, really a cool album so thank you Tim for bringing it to me uh, which he also wanted us to talk about our favorite minimal albums. So yeah. tr- I don't, that's kind of like tough. Are we talking about minimal like recording style or like minimal, minimal instruments or what kind of hit? What's your favorite like album that just had like the least amount of production and was just kind of minimal? So that's really hard to say for me because I don't really keep up with the recording side of stuff. Yeah. Of how much, stuff was used to make an album okay i mean you could (sighs) one of my favorite minimal albums is probably damn the torpedoes by tom petty and the heartbreakers Hmm. that was um or was it well i don't know if it was damn the torpedoes 
I think it was. That was the one that was recorded in Sound City. And they did it. Everything was pretty much one take. So they didn't overdub. They didn't do anything like that. It was all the songs on there were recorded as a band live. So that was prob- that's probably one of my favorite albums that was, uh, you know, just kind of made minimal, no overdubbing, no cleaning things up. That's just what it was. Mm-hmm. So, and I mean, it's a fancy, it's also one of my favorite albums. I mean, it's got Refugee, Here Comes My Girl, Don't Do Me Like That, um, Shadow of a Doubt. It's a great album, a great song. So it's it's a fantastic album. Um, but I don't know about minimal instruments. It's kind of getting... Sp- hmm. Tim, you pick a hard topic. I mean, you could almost argue like... Uh, early U2, early Green Day, when it was like just the... Uh, Ooh, Blink-182, Blink-182... Blink 182. Uh, Cheshire Cat. Mm. That's a good album. It's pretty minimal. I mean, it was just three instruments and some noise. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of... Oh, man, I just feel like... I'm trying to think of like albums that were just minimal instruments. I guess that Springsteen album is like the ultimate minimal. It was just acoustic hymn and a four-track. Yeah. I'm going to go with that. I'm stealing Tim's answer because that was the easiest <laughs> thing to do. Nebraska by Bruce Springsteen. What did he win today, Bob? <laughs> um, but so Chris can't come up with an answer. We'll go. No. Just just what was it before Dookie? Uh, I think that was the 12 something. Shit. It was like their EP that had a bunch. It was like kind of like their demo almost, wasn't it? How do you spell disc? Oh, you know what? I've got it. Foo Fighters. They're, uh, what was the name of, was it just Foo Fighters was their first album? Maybe. You should know this. Dude, I'm like, I yeah. want to say, for some reason, I'm just, like. Okay, so 39 Smooth yeah. and Kerplunk or before Dookie. Kerplunk, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, and the stuff off of uh, 39 Smooth was pretty minimal, too. Like, yeah. you can kind of, like, low-key tell it's just, you know, Billy Joe with his electric and the bass and drums just chilling yeah. somewhere. Okay, so I'm going to, you know, I changed my answer. I'm going to go with Foo Fighters uh, self-titled debut release because it's literally um, just Dave Grohl. Like everything's Dave Grohl. So that's minimal because it's only one person. True. So I'm going to go with that personnel. Uh, well, never mind. Greg Dooley played guitar on X Static. But that's everything, one song. But everything else was Dave Grohl the whole time. <laughs> so there, I'm going to go with that. Because For All the Cows is like one of my favorite songs by them. <laughs> and... I'm going to tell you guys something else, too. Uh, I do love This Is A Call, but Big Me, I actually don't like that song, even though that was kind of like their big hit. You can look it up later, Chris. I know you don't know what it is. I was going to say, is this a uh, Foo Fighters song? Yeah, that was that was like his, that was their big hit, because they did the, um, that's where they really started with like the music videos being like commercials. That was their whole mm. thing. Music videos were just commercials, so they did the Mentos thing. And uh, that was the song, and I really don't like that song. <laughs> um, so we'll move on, though. Let's do some song ripoffs because you wanted to talk about this. Apparently, you've like you're gonna pick a fight, and I just want to sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Is it really a fight, though? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so I was listening to the radio today in the car for once instead of listening to Spotify. I listen uh, to nothing, man. I just. I, I I do that sometimes. Half the time I can't because then I'll end up falling asleep. But uh, the Chicago song, uh, what did I say it was? Hard to say. I'm sorry. Into yeah. uh, what was the other song on it? 
getaway or something like getaway. that. Getaway, yeah. Yeah. So it got to the end of It's Hard to Say I'm Sorry, and it started going into the next song, and I thought it was a completely different song. It, it sounded a lot like... Uh, Live and Let Die by Wings. Live and Let Die. And but it was it threw me off as I was like okay this th- this doesn't sound right so you know I pull out Siri and I'm like what song is playing and it gives me Chicago I'm like this sounds way 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 too close well I'm glad Siri didn't tell you that it was Wings <laughs> yeah that, that <laughs> like, would let's like, live and let die you're like I, no it's not like, no that. no I'm gonna send a strongly worded uh, <laughs> letter to Apple if that was the case yeah so. I listen to him and I can hear the. Is <coughs> that of... like that piano? Those like string synths, like going in that kind of the same rhythm. And as, it kind of uh, has that like die. "Live and Let Die" kind of has that like. What's the word I'm looking for? Kind of driving, not kind of really. Yeah, it's got the driving sound, but it's got a little bit of. I know. I want to say the word is like ethnic which i know sounds like insensitive and i'm sure i might upset someone with that but it kind of it has that like it doesn't completely sound like white guys are writing it mm. you know what i mean it yeah. sounds it sounds like white guys are trying to sound like uh kind of like uh how paul simon took on kind of like the african feel with his right. music it's it felt like the white rockers are trying to do the same thing if that's a good way of putting it without offending people. I guess um, we'll find out. Well, uh, if you are offended, you can email me at info at the tone <laughs> um, I'm kidding, Blake. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, don't, don't send him emails. Uh, unless, unless you like his show, then you can send him emails saying how much you like his show. Uh, but he doesn't need me helping him tell people about his show. I think he's got one of the biggest shows. He probably, were, he could release like an episode a year and still get more listens than us. Uh, um, Let's see. But so song ripoffs, I actually mentioned because Chicago's another one that's involved with one, mm-hmm. in my opinion, which is, but they didn't rip off someone else. Uh, we have to say, too, Chicago wrote their song after Wings put out Live and Let Die by a decade. Um, but Chicago also had a big hit with the song 25 or 6 to 4, which was, I think, kind of one of their, that's probably, in my opinion, one of their biggest hits. Uh, besides the Peter Cetera bull crap, which is hard to say. I'm sorry. Uh, you're the inspiration. All the stuff when you're listening to it and you're like, this is some... Sh- shut up, dog. It ends up on the soft rock radio. Yeah. <laughs> um, they... Uh, I'm seeing if he's going to stop now. I... Uh, I'm going to talk real quiet so he doesn't hear me. Um, but yeah, they did 25 or 64 and Green Day, one of your favorite or one of your favorite bands, has Brain Stew, which is Brain Stew tuned down a half step? I think it is. Uh, I think a I, lot of stuff on Dookie kind of like with Basket Case was tuned down a half step. When I Come Around was tuned down a half step. Um, I don't know yeah, if Yeah, I think was. most of... Uh dookie was i think she was tuned down a half step um yeah so i would it's safe to assume that uh was i think was brain stew on dookie that was on dookie right brain stew and jaded uh i just clicked off of that page. you should know this i haven't memorized the, the track listings in that long track, yeah um yeah that had to have been dookie because that's probably my favorite album. By it now. was a single. No, Insomniac. Came out in 96. Insomniac. Yeah. That was on Insomniac. Okay. So, all right. But that was kind of a ripoff there. Uh, we've all, we all know about the whole, like, uh, what is it? Live in La Vida Loca or Viva La Vida by Coldplay and the Joe Satriani song. Um, I mean, there's just so many throughout history of music uh there's been led zeppelin's been accused of plagiarism quite a few times but my question is at what point are you influenced by a song and are you stealing it because there's there's this weird line that we've reached in music there's only so many dang chords right and everyone has been influenced by someone down the road like i mean 
you can kind of trace some of the really big innovators. But I mean, you've got, I'm talking about like, what's it? Uh, wow, man, I'm, my brain's fried today. Johnson, the guy with the crossroads, went down to the crossroads. The old blues player? Uh... Dude, don't. The only crossroads I know is Eric Clapton. Oh yeah, yeah, that's who I'm talking about. That was the guy. (laughs) No, I'm being, I'm, I'm being sarcastic. That's not the guy. I figured. Um, Robert Johnson. God bless America. All right, so Robert Johnson influenced quite a few people. Um, and like that goes down the line. You've got uh, Robert Johnson, the Muddy Waters, to all these guys going down the list, and then these. Black artists are influencing these white kids. You've got people like the Rolling Stones who were uh, British guys who wanted to do Delta blues. And then you've got different styles of blues. You got Chicago blues, you know, Delta blues, stuff like that. And you got all these people who are influencing each other too. Eric, you know, we were just talking about Eric Clapton. It, Jimi Hendrix influenced Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton was around before Hendrix. But Hendrix came and was changing the game using these pedals and doing these crazy things with his guitar that people really didn't know about. And he influenced Eric Clapton, Eric Clapton, you know, did stuff like this. I mean, look at Eric Clapton did. I shot the sheriff. That's Bob Marley. That's reggae. That's you got all this stuff. We've got to like, do we draw the line or is it just one of those things where when you listen to a song, you're like that kind of like you had, you're like, that's sounds just like this. Mm hmm. And I feel like, I mean, there's only so many notes and so many patterns and so many rhythms. Things are going to get duplicated. Yeah, because you were even talking earlier about, like, uh, a lot of people in the PNW world do it. Like, we take something, like, take a lead line from a secular song and we throw it in just because it fits. And then you Mm -hmm. also have the argument of what was the, I think it was Planet Shakers? It might have been Elevation. I don't. I don't listen to Christian music that much. They slowed down the intro, prog- not the progression. The uh, oh, for notes, um, yeah. streets from streets have no name. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I, it, was, I, it was the same. Do 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 do. They just like slowed it way down, took the delay off, and it's like, nope, no, no. If I yeah. can, if I with those are t- those to me are too specific of a note pattern. Because and that it's not a coincidence. Yeah. Like potentially, it could be some guy sitting in the studio is like, "Oh, well, if we take the delay off, slow it down, it sounds different enough." <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know, but the problem is, is I just I feel like we spend so much time, like really listening for it so i think there's a lot of people who kind of do that they listen for you know people stealing stuff it's just you can only do so much and there's also a lot of players and musicians who write songs and they're like it's a nod at this guy or it's a nod at this band i i love this band so i did it a song kind of like their style i mean if you're upfront about it like that especially if it's a I knew a musician doing it, calling back to somebody that, you know, really influenced them. I find that like kind of cool. It's like, okay, you went out on a limb and did something similar, but I guess, uh, I guess you're right. Like, where is that line? I think it really comes down to now stealing lyrics. That's a tough thing too, because I've there's been a lot of people who have used someone else's lyrics as a nod to them. I think it, I, I guess you're right. It's a kind of about transparency. Yeah, I mean, if you're open and transparent about it, but I guess if you're, because you could also have this person that looks at it like, okay, that's just openly admitting to stealing. You just like you go up to the person that you just robbed their house. It's like, hey, I'm enjoying your TV. Okay. I was really inspired by your 65 inch whatever. <laughs> so I went and bought one myself <laughs> from you. <laughs> yeah. Um well, there's there's been so many that it's kind of hard too, especially I think the simpler the line. Mhm. 
like the simpler the musical line it's tough that's like uh there's a big thing with uh what's his name yeah. sam smith mm-hmm. and tom petty with uh his song tom petty's song i won't back down sounded a lot like stay with me so mm-hmm. the, you know there's one and part of my singing is and i'm not gonna sing it never mind so it's like and you stay with me because you're you know oh, all that's... i need and then you got no i won't back down no i won't back down and it's like but it's such a simple line it would be so easy to recreate or redo mm-hmm. without just yeah that's actually a little mini topic i've wanted to get on but it was like per artist of like reused lyrics because since I listen to Green Day and U2 a lot, I've picked up on Bono has written how long, like at, like the question, like the two word question into multiple songs. So you've got how long must we sing this song from mm-hmm. uh, whatever it is. And I don't remember what the second I, there might have been. A That's, third. That was Sunday, Bloody Sunday. Yeah. Um, uh, dude, like, how do I know that? And you don't. <laughs> My, Come my on. mind is fried. <laughs> but then Green Day also uses like a child left behind in two songs. Or Metallica says, yeah, in like every song. <laughs> so there's that. Um, so, but that's also just artists sounding like themselves. Uh, there was a big thing whenever uh, John Fogarty left Creedence, Creedence Clearwater Revival, became a uh, solo artist, but he went with a different. Uh, record label because mm-hmm. he got screwed over a lot in CCR and all that and so he went with a different record label to do a solo stuff well his old record label sued him because uh, two of his songs one of his solo songs sounded a lot like one of his CCR songs and it's like at what point that that would be my argument on that like he, they lost the whole lawsuit because you can't sue an artist for sounding like themselves right so i'd say reusing the same lyrics i mean that's also you know authors use the same uh kind of storylines they recycle those Mm -hmm. i mean look look at you got like uh is it agatha christie or whatever who does the a for like the m is for murder stuff like that if it's agatha christie i'm gonna be it's probably not because i'd just be really mad at myself for knowing that off the top of my head <laughs> um let's see it is for murder this episode is brought to you by ideas googling things so we're sponsored sponsored by google now Shh, no <laughs> or was it dial m for murder that's a film oh it's sue grafton that's who it is good i don't know who agatha christie is in the first place sue grafton um, I don't know. I just feel like I think the problem is is that the business side that's a prime example. The peop John Fogarty getting sued for signing like himself mm-hmm. is so asinine and ridiculous that the, even that shows that all of this people copying each other half the time I don't think the artists really care. Except for when it comes to the money. Yeah. It's all about it's all about money. So yeah, if you're doing like a know. straight like note for note lyric to lyric cover, but you like don't get the rights to it, I guess in a way, I'm guessing is where you're coming from too. Is just that kind of ripoff. Hold on, what I've lost you. I might have lost myself My too. Going poop. Oh. So what'd you say? Can you hear me now? I yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was just saying, like, uh, like when you just randomly have a cover on an album, like, I like that. Whether or not, but it also comes down to whether or not, like, they fully got the rights to it, to, you know. Well, yeah. I think. I mean, but because I feel like there's somebody that re- I when I say recently, I mean within the last decade. Okay, there was a big thing with... So, Foo Fighters did an album that was a bunch of, like, rarities and covers. Uh-huh. And on there, they did Darling Nikki by Prince. Mm-hmm. And Prince is... We- well, was a weird guy because he wrote a lot of songs for a lot of people to use. Mm-hmm. 
but he hated people covering his songs. So I want everyone to let that sink in for a second. He was really big and he protected his music a lot too, because you could never find a Prince song on YouTube. He would have it yanked down super fast. Interesting. But so a funny thing happened uh, when Prince played the Super Bowl, which goes back to us talking about Super Bowl episodes. Um, mm-hmm. Prince did Best of You by Foo Fighters, which was actually kind of a middle finger to the Foo Fighters because he's like, yeah, you might have done my song on the Rinky Dink album that no one's really buying, but I'm going to play your song at the Super Bowl. So Prince was an odd duck. I just watched an interview not too long ago about Dave Grohl actually talking about that because they were just sitting there kind of like, what? He's doing our song? He got so mad about us doing Darling Nikki. It was kind of funny. Right. <laughs> so I think that's kind of, I, I think if you get like the graces of another person, but also, I, man, people forget where the music industry came from. Back in the Motown, the 60s and the the you know early seven or the 70s, uh, a lot of artists would do the same song. Right. The, the real stars of the Motown were some of the songwriters. Smokey Robinson is a prime example. He actually became you know went on the other side and was famous for being a singer too. He wrote a lot of songs. And he wrote a lot of songs for the Temptations and other artists. And that's what people did was they covered, you know, they did all these songs that was, you know, and the writer was the guy probably making quite a bit of the money. Right. I don't know where I was going with that, but this is where we landed. Fun. (laughs) Fun. Now your dogs are barking. Yep. All right. So, um... How long have we been talking for? An hour. Hey, look all at right. us. We did this all by myself. I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, so thanks for joining us. Uh, you can check our Facebook group out, facebook.com slash group slash the effects loop. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Check out our YouTube. Uh, let's see. Leave us a review on iTunes. That's something that I haven't checked out in a while. Um Help us out. More reviews we get, the more likely people are to find it when they're searching for stuff. Uh, and it would be really cool to get more listeners. You five need to get your stuff together and start telling people about us. Yeah. All five. Will. Will. Jason. Michael. It's sad that I'm like, probably... Uh, if you want me to scold you and you want me to know your name, join our group so I know who's listening. Um, that, that's actually, the premium content we're talking about. The premium... I will just sit here and say your name with disdain. Um, and then uh, check out our Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash the effects loop. You can give us money there. <laughs> I've, we're Sarah McLaughlin when you need her. That's why we're not getting all the supporters. <laughs> we don't have the sad songs. It's making me very tempted to download it and add it in. Oh my! If we could, uh, no, we can't use that song because Phil already let Sixty Cycle Hum use his cover of it. Email Phil really quick and see if he'll let us use like, it. Like, hey, <laughs> Phil, I need you. I need your arms of the angel sent to this really quick. This just here's the Google. Drive. Just be really awkward about it and just send him. I need your arms in an angel. Or arms of an angel. Dear Phil, I need your arms <laughs> in an angel. <laughs> Four Love hours yours. later. What? Yeah. Be like, what are you talking? You know what would be great? If he was just like, you got it. <laughs> like, he knew what I was talking about. He <laughs> just get an email with it. Uh, uh-huh. All right. So that was the most distracted ending we've ever done. Almost, maybe. Um, so, yeah. Go to Patreon, YouTube, That's Facebook, funny. iTunes, Instagram, LinkedIn, all that fun stuff. And thanks for joining us, guys. I'm Diaz. I'm Chris. And we're the effects loop. Nice. <laughs> you like that? I, I kind of off the cuff right there. Uh, <laughs> All right. See you guys. Bye, guys. Bye.